Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. Now do you ever have one of those days when it starts off bad and gets progressively worse throughout the day to a point where you just check out? <laughs> That's kind of like my day today. Everything from the very, very morning by the fact that I couldn't sleep, woke up early, and uh, everything since then has been going from bad to worse to worse to worse. I'm not going to get into the details of it, but uh, at this point, my day kind of broke me. It's getting to a point of where I'm just sitting and waiting for my PC to explode or, I don't know, something else to go wrong, basically. Which is also a reason why I absolutely dread the big feature crystal opening <laughs> that should be coming up in a couple of hours with the change of the new feature crystal. But hey, maybe that's going to be the lucky break that I needed. So anyways, this is war number nine, season 35, new nations taking on for Loki. So huge shout out to all of the guys from for Loki. Definitely tons of content creators there. I, you know, I'm not going to go all of them, but you can see that, you know, there's Enzo Eigen in there. Awesome guy. Masai is in there as well. A regular in my streams mod on my channel. And uh, obviously a whole bunch of other people from For Loki. They're always a very tough war to fight for New Nation. And uh, before we get to the end, I must say that last two fights recording failed, which was just part of the day. It just seemed very, very much on brand. On top of it, those are really cool fights. So I'm going to kind of go over them and explain them a bit. But on section one, I'm as always on path nine, and even the very, very first fight is going to be dodgy as heck. So we're going to go through them a bit slowly. So path nine here, I also need to deal with that Hulkling later on, but Void, obviously, I have taken on many a times. And this fight can go very wrong very quickly. And it did. Now, full disclaimer, I did get KO'd in this war. But not here. This fight, however, still does go very wrong very fast. Right, so obviously we're going to boost up. We're going to use the class boost. Everything else is going in against Void. And as always, the rotation is parry, heavy, finish a combo with light, finish a combo with medium. And you will be where you need to go. You will have enough power. Here I go. And I'm not. <laughs> now, the reason that happened is because I went for a straight up intercept after my heavy attack, where I should have went for another parry, I believe. But either way, it caused me to throw a level one instead of level two. As you can see here, obviously oh, it's incinerate immune. You can see that incinerate phase is about to expire. And on top of that, void is about to place a debuff on me. So I have a choice to make at this moment, right here. This is actually a good study case material. What to do when this fight does go wrong. So Void still has 80% of his health, super healthy. And it's going to get very, very dangerous for me very, very soon. So I made the decision to go in and fast in order to be able to purify that debuff from Void basically immediately. So here, even though poison phase is active, made the decision to have, I, I got quite lucky, I'm not gonna lie, I only got one poison on me. Now that really didn't matter that much, if I got two or three, I'd take slightly more poison damage, but I did manage to purify that Petrify, that Petrify would have messed with me in virtually every single way of the game, because that would have reduced my healing even further, obviously it would have been a second debuff as well, or a singular debuff which would still be dealing a ton of damage to me, as you can see, at this point, I'm taking a lot of damage as is right here. Uh, but now at this point, I just decided to go for it, basically even with the poison curse active, just relying on the nuke. And that was, again, 100% the right decision because every second that I was spending in this fight, it's costing me a ton of HP. And it was a very dodgy start and I should have taken it as a sign, but fine, whatever. Next up, I need to deal with this Toad. Obviously dealing with Toad using Nimrod is going to be a completely different ballgame. 
this fight is very simple, quite hard to lose, I would even say. The base idea is I just need to wait out uh, the first cycle of incinerates, wait for poison cycle to be active, and, and then just start laying in that toad. On top of it, I'm perfectly free to parry toad as many times as I want. And uh, thanks to that, I'm going to be getting a ton of armor ups. And as soon as I enter Blitz Protocol, each armor up increases my attack as well. So I'm hitting quite hard. And whenever he does get regen or promise, we're nullifying it. Now, he does get that indestructible, which I'm not too fast about. Uh, because as soon as it expires, I'm basically ready to drop level 2 at the very end of the poison cycle. Now, I do get a couple of incinerates on me, but they really don't do any damage. Now, the third fight. I, I did have, like, a bit busier word this time around, but this third fight, this Hulkling fight. Now, I have done Hulkling on a similar node. I did him on Path 9 before on One-Eyed Open, which is also a Hazard Shift node. And I had fought against Hulkling quite a few times before the previous war to know that fight much better. The basic test results were, if you are super quick, you have the time for the nuke early on. If he doesn't die by then, or if something gets delayed, fight gets exponentially harder, and you need to be very patient. Because if he does get indestructible before you throw your level 2 and before you get your 5 judgments active, when you nullify that indestructible, he's going to get a passive one instead and you're not going to be dealing any damage. Now on top of it, we obviously have Hazard Ship to play around here, and I do not have Odin's pre-fight, and there's going to be the Schadenfreude. And we're going to see basically a result of me kind of missing my parry, getting some hits in the combo meter, and realizing that I cannot throw my level 2 because I'm not going to get there before he would trigger his immortality. So you can see, it's going to start off fine. So parry heavy. Now I go in there, and here I took two hits on my block already. So he has two fierce charges and he has triggered two regions there and at this point because i took third hit and a block he's unblockable so i had to either nail the intercept there or i was kind of screwed here he catches me and he immediately throws his level two in my block which deals a ton of damage and there i swear i was just trying to use my special attack to get out of the corner but his special attack takes priority and i die so this is one of those fights which I knew that can get out of hand very quickly, very easily, and I did pay the price and didn't do any damage to him. And it was all purely down to the start of it. So we can analyze it right again from the very, very beginning. The problem is with the fact that I just took one too many hits on a block, and that's virtually it. Because as soon as I noticed that... Um, as soon as I noticed that unblockable that he had, I knew that I can't parry. It means I had to land an intercept, which I could have done, but I realized the second too late here. And I also knew that if I was going to be hitting him at that point, I would not be able to throw my level 2 before he gets his indestructible. Now, this right here you guys might see as a mistake. But right here, if I had started hitting him, it would have triggered his indestructible and he was in the poison phase so it would have been getting a ton of poisons and it just again would not work out for me at all because i would be getting poisons and he would be indestructible so i had to wait it out but he was being super aggressive obviously got me in cornered and it just went as bad as it could go now overall I still feel fairly confident with this fight. As you're going to see, I'm going to go back in again and I'm going to do everything exactly as I practiced. Now, I was slightly tilted, as I said. This day already had been quite messy. This obviously did not improve my day. You can see that I heal up. That in invulnerability boost perhaps might have helped, but again, I had really no reason to think it is going to be needed here and I was running low on them, so... That's, you know, another issue here, but so we activated it here, but this time around everything was perfect. Parry, heavy, combo finish with a light, combo finish medium, and a level 3. And it just shows how some of these champions are so punishing when one tiny thing, and some of these fights as well, because it's not just the champions, also the hazard shift node and everything surrounding it. One tiny change there 
where I just nailed my second parry. I didn't take that extra hit on the block. He didn't have the extra time to gain more charges, so I knew that I'm going to be able to get in there in time. Again, such an easy, straightforward fight, but as soon as one thing goes wrong, it all just went tits up, basically. So here again, parry heavy, parry finish combo with light. Now he gets his indestructible, but he still only has two regions and no extra charges there. Drop my level two, everything's fine. Oh well, but I died already. So not much I can do about that. Now the next fight, next fight that I have to do is here against Apocalypse. And this fight I have done in the past. Now, it is not going to go perfect either, but it's a fairly straightforward fight. You just basically need to wait out Stunning Reflection, and uh, then you can parry him, get your charges, and uh, that's it. So here I'm going to hit his block to try and get some spacing. That's it. That's basically the plan here. I <laughs> actually get in an intercept, which is awesome as well. Avoid taking hits in a block, even though this audience, you know, j would just increase the block damage. Here I actually parried him by accident. This is 100% me just being slightly tilted. But obviously Nimrod doesn't take much damage. Now he's getting his power drained as well. And uh, <laughs> I get hit some more, but obviously Nimrod is a tank. It's all good. I could have thrown my level 2 here, but that would have been a big mistake, obviously, because I was at 8 charges and in the wrong protocol. Now I have 10 charges and I use my level 2 and he's pretty much dead. If I had a couple more armor ups, he would have been immediately dead there, but now we just need to drop another combo and drop a level 1 and the fight is over here. Now in section 2, I also need to do path 9. And this is where the recording failed. I had to do those fights at the end of the war after the boss had been taken down because it was Tigra and Kitty Pride. So first fight against Tigra. Now that Mystic Dispersion was not a factor anymore, I brought in Nebula for that fight because Nebula obviously and the Shock and Bleed a Hazard Shift is pretty much a perfect champion because you hit Tigra whilst she's in Shock phase, you gain charges and bleed, she's still immune to bleed. And the entire fight there was activated a pre-fight boost one, baited out a heavy attack, got to level two. I didn't have in you know huge amount of charges. I think I only got to about nine charges. And then I just did the parry and level two thing, and that was enough to kill the tiger, even with only like 18 shocks at the peak. And uh, that was it. With Nebula on that one-eyed open, yes, you will take a one tick of damage typically if you parry the opponent with your charges on but you can easily eat that damage and then obviously at the time you're dropping your combo and using your level two and doubling up on those shocks and doing the real damage then the stun has long expired so it is fairly safe to use nebula and one-eyed open especially if opponents have limber without Magneto House of X pre-fight, and that was like the best strategy there, because Tiger can be quite annoying opponent. And then against Kitty, it was actually tricky-ish fight with Nimrod, because I had to wait out the initial shock phase with Nimrod, and I couldn't parry Kitty, because parrying Kitty would obviously give her prowess, which is something we want to avoid. So it was just block baiting heavy attacks there the entire time, getting myself in the corner, baiting out heavy attacks, dodging the heavy attacks until the phases changed. That's when I started attacking Kitty Pride, got to my level two and nuked her down with a single level two. So unfortunately I did lose the recording for those two fights, but they were both like 30 second fights. It's just one level two with Nebula, one level two with Nimrod. They were kind of cool fights. I really wanted to show the Nebula one, but I did lose the recording there. And then at the end, uh, we did end ended up beating for Loki. Now, unfortunately, I was the only death in my ball, gro ball group. That means that I ate the donut, which sucks. Otherwise, our ball, grounds, ball group would have went for three straight deathless wars that didn't happen due to me screwing up that Hulkling fight. But overall, obviously, huge shout out for Loki guys. Uh, well played war. Uh, I don't think either one of the teams had the perfect war here. As we can see, we had five to seven deaths. So that is fairly death, fairly high death count, I would say, for both alliances. And at the moment now, New Nation 
is in the Masters top 10. And uh, again, it is not likely. I don't think it's possible, even if we do have a perfect season finish for us to make it to top three. But even the fact that we salvage our season from one to three start, so we lost three of our first four wars uh, to this point in a season where we are back in Masters top 10, obviously is a good accomplishment for us. And I'm quite happy with that as is. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, this was my second death of the season. Um, sucks, stings, but as I said, it kind of just fits perfectly in the frame of the day I have been having since the entire morning. So, um, you know, there's always tomorrow, right, guys? Uh, but that is it. So this is we have three wars left in the season. So one week until the season ends. I honestly cannot wait till the end of the season. And uh, yeah, let me know how your alliances are doing in the war. And I'm going to catch you guys soon. See ya. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about the